All right, guys, so here is part one of the Living Environment Regents Review for your final exam. Now, uh, just a reminder of when this is happening. This is happening on Friday, Science is Friday. Um, it should be in the morning, but everyone uh, did get a different schedule. I'm not sure if they changed the times. Look for your schedule details. If you are not sure, make sure to stop by the principal's office or the main office tomorrow, Tuesday, um, or during the week before Friday to know when you're supposed to come in. I suggest an email if you're not sure, but if you couldn't get in contact with anyone, just be at the school by 8 a.m. Time of the beginning of the morning exam is 8.30. You wanna give yourself some time to really um, slow down, eat breakfast, because you know how I feel about breakfast, you know it's scientifically proven. So. In terms of rules, please sleep the night before, sleep before all of your exams at, from six to eight hours, get a good night's rest, eat a well-balanced breakfast, do not eat anything with potatoes because that has a chemical in it that triggers sleep. Bring your own supplies, specifically your own pen and pencils. Uh, preferably with the pencil, make it mechanical so that you don't have to worry about sharpening. Watch the video the night before at an early time, like around 6 p.m. Refresh your memory on everything. Um, and do it on your way to school if you have to, using your phone. Stay calm, relax. You got this. Do affirmations. Visualize yourself passing uh, these exams because you have the tools necessary. You have everything you need to study for the finals. Behave during the exam. Ask teachers for anything. Ask the teacher who is proctoring. A proctor is the person who is administering the exam. Um, so make sure that you have a pen and pencil, and if you need to know what time it is, just ask the teacher, do not ask the person next to you, because they can invalidate your exam and think that you're cheating. So please do not talk to anyone besides the teacher. Be patient, don't give attitude. Uh, the bubble sheets are done in pencil, the short responses are all done in pen. The graph is done in pencil. Please make sure to do this because if you do not, we are not grading the exam. So let's say that you do a short answer response in pen, we're not grading it, it is no points. Get a smooth pen. Get a gel pen if possible. Remember, blue or black ink only. No glitter pens, no colors besides the dark uh, uh, navy blue and uh, black. Mechanical pencils are really preferable to prevent the need for sharpening, as I said before, and they also have better erasers. I am going to post a separate video on what you should eat before any exam. It could change if, you're, if you have a morning or evening exam. Now, evening for college people, of course. Uh, for you guys, if you are coming for an afternoon exam, things can change a little, but I'll, get, I'll do a separate video for that. Supplies, Unity will supply all you need, but you need to make sure that you have a pen and pencil on your own because then you're subject to use the cheaper quality pen and pencils that could break easily, that could cramp your hand up because they're not smooth pens, so that is very uh, much advised. Things to keep in mind, this review is specifically uh, to refresh your knowledge of the biology. Questions are not going to be straightforward. So this is so that you can have the knowledge to answer the questions. So you're answering them to the best of your ability, using your first instinctual answer, answering all questions, do not leave any blanks. If you leave blanks, there's no possibility of you getting the point. Remember the regions is either a zero or a one, there's no half. Um, so if you're even half right, if you're right, uh, you know, if it makes scientific sense, you get the point. Regions questions change every year, but the content stays the same. So again, this review is to help you answer the questions. This is not giving you the answers for any of the specific questions. Okay, so let's get started with the microscope. Now you need to know the parts of the microscope, especially the functions. Specifically for this particular final, you need to know how much of magnification you will get uh, once you link up the eyepiece with the objective lens. Now let's go over and label. So this is the eyepiece, which usually has five or 10 times magnification, the arm, the stage right here, stage clips, 
the course adjustment, which moves the stage, the fine adjustment, which uh, refines and clears up any fuzziness, the diaphragm that controls the amount of light that goes through the stage, the light source that adds light, of course. This is the base. If you come across a question of how do you properly hold a microscope, you hold the microscope one hand on arm and another hand under the base. The stage clips are to secure the, uh, the slide. These are the objective lens. The smallest magnification is usually four. Middle is 10, highest is 40. Now, you're gonna have a question probably asking you, what is the highest possible magnification you have? Now, this doesn't mean that it has to be lined up with the eyepiece. You just have to observe what are the magnifications that you have on the objective lens and what do you have on the eyepiece because you have to multiply. So in this particular microscope, the highest objective lens is a 40. And for the um, eyepiece is 10 times. So 10 times 40 is 400. So the highest objective lens, uh, a magnification, the highest magnification that you can get to view your specimen is 400 times for this microscope. Now for the test, you're gonna have a microscope with different magnifications, different numbers. The idea is they wanna make sure you know what to do. You multiply the highest number of the objective lens to the eyepiece, however much the eyepiece is. Now this chart just uh, helps to emphasize what total magnification is. 10 times four, smallest, that's 40. Ten, the, and the eyepiece always stays the same. 10 times 10 is 100 for the middle, medium size, and 10 times 40 is 400 for the maximum uh, increase of your of total magnification. Now there are two really important definitions that you need to know. Now remember that cells uh, have a cell membrane that let molecules in or out of the cell. It's semi-permeable. Permeable meaning that it allows things to go in and out. Like you can think of, you know, porous, things that have pores. Um, so diffusion is the act of movement of molecules through the cell membrane from high concentration to low. Active transport is the movement of molecules from low to high using ATP energy because you're, you're going into an already concentrated area. Now, why do you need to know this? I have to be honest with you. You just need to know this for the one of the four mandated regions, which is called relation, uh, I'm sorry, uh, diffusion through a membrane. In this lab, you did two things. You ma we made a fake cell and we um, observed onion cells and added salt to them. So let's start with our uh, experiment of making a artificial cell to mimic and understand the cell membrane. So here we have a beaker and it's filled with water, which is lined up to here, so this is water. And this is our artificial cell that we tied at both ends, so that's why it looks like this. Inside of this, we put glucose and starch, which are sugars, basically carbohydrates. And here uh, in the water, we put iodine, which is a starch indicator solution, meaning that when it, if it even touches starch, it turns a dark color black. Blue, black, uh, everyone has a different opinion on it. So you uh, have here a picture of when you started and when you finished off. Now I apologize that I don't have my digital pen because if not I would have been drawing things, but we put starch and glucose inside and iodine on the outside. Now after time things changed. The inside of this got very, very dark black and the outside of the water got either a very pale amber color, very, very pale, or completely clear. So what happened is all of the iodine diffused into the cell and uh, it touched the starch, so it activated that reaction and it turned, it indicated that starch is present, so it turned black. So the iodine, uh, it diffused in, the glucose diffused out, why? Because it was small enough, the molecule was small enough to permeate through, to go through, okay? The, the starch stayed put because the starch was too large to fit. And that's it. That's all you really need to know. The size of the molecules matter. Starch and glucose was in here. Diffusion is from high to low concentration. 
act of transport not, is not necessarily asked. Here uh, is a onion cell, onion cells under an observable view under a microscope. Usually they're circular, but here they have it squared. And there's an arrow, and you'll probably have a question asking, well, what happened here? What happened? We added salt. We added a salt water salt concentration solution on the slide, which dehydrated the cell. So what happened is that in order for the salt solution to go inside, diffuse inside of a cell, because that's what's happening here, water had to diffuse out, which shrank two things. The two things that shrank is the cell membrane and the cytoplasm. It shrank. It dehydrated. Um, water molecules were diffused out as salt was diffused in. So we added salt in order for this to happen. Next. Now, whenever you see a picture of a medicine dropper right in the corner of a cover slip and slide, you uh, have what's called staining. So please remember that cells are usually invisible. They're very clear. And you need to visualize them under the microscope using a stain. So if you have a question, if you come across a question asking you, well, what, what are we adding here? The stain, we're adding a stain is a proper, the proper answer. You will be taking averages. Now you will be giving a, given a calculator, so don't worry about that. And I just want to remind you of how to take averages. It's very simple. This is one of the very few times that you will need to uh, use a calculator. And it's very simple math. In living environment, it's just adding, subtracting, uh, addition, uh, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Maybe that's it. Like there's no algebra, there's nothing like that. It's very basic math. But you come across what's called data, a data table. So here, uh, remember how we did our relationships, I'm sorry, our making connections lab, where we took our pulse and we uh, saw the, uh, the, heart, the beats per minute, the heart rate of the class, and we made a bar graph, a histogram, well, you will come across a question that's going to ask you to take an average. So here we have a pulse rates of three students and we want an average. So what you do is you add everything first. So 55 plus 65 plus 70 and then press equals. You get a total number. That total number, um, you now divide it by the amount of numbers you have. So we have here one, two, three numbers. So you divide by three, and that gives us an average of 63. So we can put 63 here. Don't worry about the decimals. You can just put the, the number that you have here. If you want to round up, you can only round up if after the decimal is a five or higher. If it's a four or lower, you keep the number. If it's a 0.5 and higher, let's say this was 63.5, you can put 64. But in the living environment regions, there's a range of numbers that are correct. And usually uh, they give a little bit of room. Like if you put a 62, 64, 65, you'll get the point. But if you go way off and put like 70, that's way too off of the range. And then you'll get it incorrect. Okay, so let's maximize this again. So let me just, because uh, I have a student telling me that... I need to do not disturb. Okay, so that's time for my video because I can only do 15 minutes at a time. So I'm going to post a um, another one to uh, continue with the studying of living environment final.